6. Input, Interaction, and Second Language Acquisition Introduction This chapter and the one following comprise a pair. Whereas this chapter considers what happens outside the learner and how this affects SLA. The next chapter investigates what happens inside the learner. The starting points of this chapter is an account of three different views on the role of input in language acquisition, the behaviorist, the nativist, and interactionist views. The contribution of studies of the input provided by mothers in L1 acquisition is then briefly considered. These are important for understanding the direction that SLA research has followed, as they have provided both a methodology for investigating input in SLA and the research questions. The next two sections look at input and interaction in natural and classroom settings resoactively. Here the aim is descriptive to identify the major features that characterize the linguistic environment that learners are exposed to. The subsequent section is explanation. It considers the role that input and interaction plays in SLA. With regard both to the developmental route and to the rate of learning. In this chapter the terms input, interaction, and intake will be used with specific meanings. Input is used to refer to the language that is addressed to the L2 learner either by a native speaker or by another L2 learner. Interaction consists of the discourse jointly constructed by the learner and his interlocutors. Input, therefore, is the result of interaction. Not all the available input is processed by the learner either because some of it is not understood or because some of it is not attended to. That part of the input that is processed or let in will be referred to as intake. Three views on input in language acquisition. It is axiomatic that in order for SLA to take place, there must be 1. Some L2 data made available to the learner as input and 2. A set of internal learner mechanisms to account for how the L2 data are processed. A major issue in the study of SLA, however, has been to decide what weight to allot to 1 and 2. On the one hand it is possible to conceive of the learner as a language-producing machine who automatically and effortlessly learns AL2, provided he gets the right input data. On the other hand, the learner can be seen as a grand initiator, that is, he is equipped with just those abilities that are needed to discover the L2, no matter how impoverished the L2 data are. Also, of course, there are intermediate positions in which the learner is seen as actively contributing to SLA, but dependent on the provision of appropriate input. Behaviorist accounts of SLA view the learner as a language-producing machine. The linguistic environment is seen as the crucial determining factor. In this model of learning, input comprises the language made available to the learner in the form of stimuli and also that which occurs as feedback. In the case of the former, the learner's interlocutor models specific forms and patterns which are internalized by the learner imitating them. Thus the availability of suitable stimuli is an important determining factor in SLA. Behaviorist theories emphasize the need to regulate the stimuli by grading the input into a series of steps so that each step constitutes the right level of difficulty for the level that the learner has reached. Feedback served two purposes. It indicates when the L2 utterances produced by the leader are correct and so reinforces them, and it also indicates when the utterances are ill-formed by correcting them. The regulation of the stimuli and the provision of feedback shape the learning that takes place and lead to the formation of habits. Nativist accounts of SLA view the learner as a grand initiator. They maintain that exposure to language cannot satisfactorily for acquisition. Input is seen merely as a trigger which activates the internal mechanisms. Chomsky, 1965, argued that the imperfect nature of the mother's speech input in first language acquisition made it unlikely that any child could successfully internalize the rule system of a language if he worked on this alone. Degenerate, input was inadequate for acquisition. As a result of the preeminence of nativist views in the 1960s and early 1970, research focused on the output of L2 learners, in particular the errors they manifested in speech and writing. This was because it was believed that the output would reveal the nature of the learning strategies involved. As Larson, Freeman, 1983A, 88, observes, researchers all too often have confined the scope of their studies to examining the learner's linguistic product. 
thus overlooking an important source, i.e. input, of information which could prove elucidating in achieving a better understanding of the acquisition process. In other words, nativist views precluded the possibility that at least some aspects of the learner's output could be explained in terms of the characteristics of the input. Thus, whereas a behaviorist view of language acquisition seeks to explain progress purely in terms of what happens outside the learner, the nativist view emphasizes learner, internal factors. A third view, however, is tenable. This treats the acquisition of language as the result of an interaction between the learner's mental abilities and linguistic environment. The learner's processing mechanisms both determine and are determined by the nature of the input. Similarly, the quality of the input affects and is affected by the nature of the internal mechanisms. The interaction between external and internal factors is manifest in the actual verbal interactions in which the learner and his interlocutor participate. It follows from this interactionist view of language acquisition that the important data are not just the utterances produced by the learner, but the discourse which learner and caretaker jointly construct. Three different views regarding the role of input in language development have been discussed. The behaviorist view emphasizes the importance of linguistic environment, which is treated in terms of stimuli and feedback. The nativist view minimizes the role of the input and explains language development primarily in terms of the learner's internal processing mechanisms. The interactionist view sees language development as the result both of input factors and of innate mechanisms. Language acquisition derives from the collaborative efforts of the learner and his interlocutors and involves a dynamic interplay between external and internal factors. The discussion of the role of the linguistic environment in SLA which is the main purpose of this chapter is conducted largely within the interactionist framework. However, many of the early studies of input and interaction concerned the acquisition of a first language rather than a second language. Input and interaction in natural settings. The study of natural linguistic environments comprises two rare-related approaches. One, the study of foreigner talk, i.e. the register used by native speakers when they address non-native speakers. Two, the study of discourse involving conversations between native speakers and L2 learners. Foreigner talk studies. Studies of foreigner talk were stimulated by Ferguson's 1971 account of simplified registers. This pinpointed the linguistic similarities among mother ease, foreigner talk, and also fossilized forms of interlanguage. As in the case of mother ease, research and discussion have centered on describing and explaining foreigner talk and, more recently, speculating what role it plays in SLA. The description of foreigner talk. In order to describe foreigner talk, it is necessary to collect and analyze samples of speech addressed by native speakers to non-native speakers. Long, 19818, points out that many of the studies have failed to obtain baseline data, i.e. speech between native speakers, to serve as the basis for comparison. Also some studies where baseline data have been collected have not taken care to ensure that both sets of data were derived from identical tasks. As with any other register, foreigner talk is likely to be influenced by a whole host of variables such as the topic of conversation, the age of the participants, i.e. whether they are children, adolescents, or adults, and, in particular, the proficiency of the learners. Therefore, foreigner talk is not to be thought of as a static, fixed set of features, but as dynamic, changing in accordance with various situational factors. Foreigner talk has both formal and functional characteristics. Long 19818 labels these input and interactional featured respectively. The input features are of two types. One, those that involve simplifications within the grammatical rule structure of the language, and two, those that involve simplifications leading to ungrammatical speech. Interactional features consist of the specific discourse functions performed by native speakers. These do not differ in kind from those observed in conversations involving just native speakers, but there are differences in the frequency with which specific functions are used. The principal input and interactional adjustments which have been identified in a number of studies e.g. Ferguson and Debus 1977, Hatch, Shapira, and Goff 1978, Long 1981A. 
With reference to the distinctions between input and interaction features and between grammatical and ungrammatical simplifications, three types of foreigner talk can be identified. 1. Foreigner talk consisting only of interactional adjustments, i.e. there are no formal simplifications. 2. Foreigner talk consisting of interactional and grammatical input adjustments, i.e. there are no ungrammatical simplifications. 3. Fireiner talk consisting of interactional adjustments as well as both grammatical and ungrammatical input adjustment. Which type of foreigner talk occurs is the result of various factors concerned with the proficiency of the learner and the role relationships between the participants. In general, 1 appears to be more common than 2, which in turn is more common than 3. This is the end of this session. Please subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much.